Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphanine. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate that. And if you could, please click that like button, turn it into a rocket, and send it to the moon. So we have breaking news. Um, this is huge. HSBC and IBM plan to replace cash with their new digital currency. This is being reported on medium.com. Um, this just happened. Let's delve into it right here. It says the dawn of a cashless society may be upon us, or at least that is IBM's hope with the recent demo testing of their new central bank digital currency. Partner with HSBC, IBM has successfully executed a pilot of simultaneously executed digital asset transactions on a blockchain of their creation. This system has the potential to simplify and speed up interbank cross-border payments. The two companies have already filed additional pending patents to accompany their CBDC, which are, here's the first bullet point, a platform to simultaneously transact and clear multiple currencies across multiple chains. MBDCs, MCBDCs, blockchain technology with automated issuance of digital assets tokens via smart contracts. This is why I always felt that they brought in Hedera. Hedera is amazing, but Stellar is on such a, another level right now as far as uh, how they just um, issued their Starlight protocol, which I'm pretty sure was planned long ago. And IBM knew about this long ago. I'm pretty sure about that. But they need Hedera for their smart contract capability. All right. They're just second to none when it comes to that, in my humble opinion. Um, this is muy linda, mi gente, muy linda. This is incredible. Things are moving very fast right now, very fast. I'm gonna keep accumulating as much as I can while the price is low before everything is rolled out. Let's continue on. Next bullet point, application of smart contracts for FX transactions. Last bullet point, a blockchain platform to simultaneously clear and settle OTC Forex trades. It says, so why was this demo so important? What does this imply for the future of digital currency in our economy? Well, well, firstly, it shows us that, as I iterated before, banks and companies, both central and commercial, as well as large business institutions, are moving at a breakneck pace. They're trying to, uh, they're trying to implement their CBDCs before they are forced to utilize a particular type of CBDC by the supervisory bodies. I told you this, in my humble opinion, that's what's going on. There is a breakneck race in order to be first. Let's continue on here. In the demo, the two firms successfully ex uh, executed a cross realm and end to end digital asset transactions in seven foreign exchange corridors between two central banks via three different settlement mechanisms on two distinct blockchain networks. We're gonna look a little bit deeper into that. That might have to be in another video. Basically, they move money between central banks very efficiently using blockchain. Now, I, as I said before, look how many banks they say IBM is bringing in. This is a major deal. This is, is a major happening. Or rather, I say a big deal. I wanna say a major deal as though they made a deal. They have a lot of deals they've done with, with banks. Um, the transition uh, uh, transaction included execution and settlement of simultaneous FX transactions, automated generation and execution of smart contract based on business logic for trade agreements between an IBM cloud payment platform and HSBC channels. Last bullet point, unmediated cross-border digital token transfers between two central banks via digital currency rails with GIP payments to a final beneficiary bank. This is exactly what the Bank of International Settlements was talking about. This is exactly what the IMF was talking about. And as we see, companies like IBM, and I believe also Visa is trying to do a similar thing with, uh, a similar thing with Stellar as Viatala, as IBM is doing right now. They're going to build these CBDCs, present them to the banks that they are currently working with, which is a myriad of central banks. And the central banks let us know already that they have no interest truly in having to develop these things for themselves. They want to 
not only push forward interoperability, but they want to continue to have a good relationship with the financial technology companies. So they're looking at them to continue to continue to not only innovate, but the central banks want to incentivize that innovation. OK, so let's continue on here. A number of participants were involved in the transactions, including two central banks, a commercial bank and HSBC as the ultimate beneficiary. The participants represented, get this, 15 countries from North America, Latin America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. This is groundbreaking. Money, 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 money. <laughs> right now, everything is going according to plan. Um, <laughs> it might be going too good. <laughs> Let's, let's read a little bit further. Keith Baer, Vice President of Global Industries, Platforms and Blockchain at IBM said, the successful adoption of distributed ledgers in this proof of concept demonstrates how fintech companies like IBM are helping financial institutions improve existing procedures and explore new ways to conduct business. David Teep, Managing Director of Global Technology, Media and Telecommunications at Accenture said, as we enter the next era of globalized electronic commerce and cross-border payments, it is clear that our clients want to use blockchain technologies, blockchain, blockchain technologies to redefine how business, how businesses interact with each other and their customers. That says a lot and is what I said before. The central banks, that's guaranteed money. Cross-border remittances, P2P, that's guaranteed money. That's the only the only sector that is in question is B2B payments. And that's what's on the table right now where there's going to be a little bit of a battle with the legacy system. And, not, and in my humble opinion, the only thing the legacy system has to battle is just uh, um, contracts that they could possibly extend, um, power that they have through the leverage of how much money they have out there and the relationships that they have because they cannot compete technologically speaking. Um, so, but... B2B is the only thing that's in question. And the only question there is, is how high is the volume going to go? How fast are they going to adopt? Are they going to be first? And what is the average transaction value that's going to be coming out of these particular, uh, these particular large institutions that are going to be doing B2B uh, cross-border remittances and transactions in general? Also, I wanna put out there also that expect a lot of these companies to um, issue their payroll OK, they're going to be paying a lot of their employees via these particular mechanisms as well over the blockchain. Why do I say that? Yesterday you saw, well, not you, but we saw Cello issue uh, uh, certain tweets where they have incentivized companies and they have companies right now that are going to be uh, issuing their payroll utilizing Cello. That's huge. That's major. Um, that's good volume. And we'll, I mean, how much value that is as far as the average transaction value, we have to wait to see. But we can assume if we're talking uh, uh, large, large business institutions, it, it, and if the banks decide to do that as well, to utilize these particular mechanisms for their payroll, all of this is major. All of this is good. This is huge. Let's continue on here. So there is an interesting little bit at the end of this um, particular article, and I'm going to post a link in the community community tab to this article so you can read the rest yourself. And it says this, whether you believe this change is good or bad is subjective, but it is objectively true that a cashless society will empower global banks beyond their current levels. I said this before. Not only is there a lot of money left on the table by the archaic antiquated legacy system, but that's there is a power struggle going on. The central banks and the commercial banks, mostly the supervisory bodies, want to retain their power over the market, over the world, which is logical to me. And I completely understand that. However, when you have these new foundations coming up, Stellar Foundation, Hedera, and they're moving into all of these markets, building all of these corridors. They're moving all of this money or, or they stand to move 
all of this substantial money, they're going to have a lot of sway in what goes on in the world, what goes on in those sectors. Any, anybody who takes a large part of the financial market share is going to have a lot of power. So they want to retain that power. But how do you do that and compete with, uh, 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 with te technological entities that you cannot surpass them when it comes to transactions per second? You cannot per surpass them when it comes to, um, to, to security, to the quickness and efficiency with which those protocol move. You integrate with them. If you can't beat them, join them, right? That's essentially what they're doing. So uh, in a very wise way, the Bank of International Settlements, the European Central Bank, the International Monetary Fund, as well as the World Bank are joining them. So they're going to integrate their systems. Infrastructure building is going to take time. Um, of course, this is also uh, predicated upon certain fintechs like IBM who are moving at a breakneck pace. They're, they have a great team. They have very brilliant minds working on these projects. And as you can see, they're wasting no time. So yes, that this can um, expedite the, the infrastructure upgrades like what the Bank of International Settlements is talking about, like JP Morgan issued, and, and, and both of them are kind of saying th uh, two to three years. One is saying like three to five years. So we have an idea of how long it's going to take for them to upgrade infrastructure and fully roll out CBDCs and digital currencies the way that they want to so they can scoop up all that money. What does that mean for you and I? That means that price is going to raise and it might be coming sooner than we expect. Um, this is huge news. Very, very good. So we had other news that I was I was making a few postings about on um, the community tab. If you go to my YouTube page and click on that community tab, you see a few postings. And it was about the Thailand central bank had uh, delayed their central bank digital currency until late 2022. But there were articles already earlier in the year saying that they were having problems. They were trying to develop their uh, central bank digital currency on consensus, which leverages Ethereum. And I said this to people before that Ethereum is not a, a, a sufficient uh, protocol to build a CBDC on, in my humble opinion, just looking at all of, all of the data. Now, a direct competitor to Ethereum that does everything much, much better, no offense to Ethereum, I'm just talking about uh, uh, str strictly on a technological level is Hedera. It does smart contracts better. It can do up to 150,000 transactions per second. Settlement, two to three seconds. Sometimes it seems even faster than that for those of us who actually use HBAR. It's pretty fast, very, very fast. Uh, the security of it is unbelievable, okay? Because they use a gossip mechanism in their protocol, which if you look at the gossip mechanism, there is, it's second to none. <laughs> as, far as, as far as its complication and it, the mathematics behind it. Uh, so my thought process was, I believe, as I stated and iterated in, in prior videos, that Hedera can easily replace Ethereum as a central bank digital currency. Hedera is being leveraged, as I covered in a video months ago, being leveraged as a CBDC by the company Mtech, which is doing great business in Africa, by the way. And a lot of these companies want to be, uh, do well in, in developing economies like in Africa, Latin America, India, China, because they're going to be growing and they're, there's going to be massive capital coming out of these economies. So it's just very good that they're getting in early, building corridors, building CBDCs for these particular uh, sectors, and then they'll grow with them and be very much ingrained in those societies, in those governments, and in their technologies. Uh, it's, it's just a brilliant thing. But however, let's go back to what I was saying before, circle back around. Uh, there's a few banks that are utilizing consensus, uh, which is leveraging Ethereum. And, I, and it's just not going to be viable as a CBDC, in my humble opinion. High gas fees, slow transaction times. It's like entering the legacy system all over again, and it's not necessary. Hedera can replace Ethereum. That's why I said Hedera instead of Stellar, XRP, Algorand, or Cello, because uh, if they went with Ethereum and they liked Ethereum, they'll love Hedera. That's the thinking. You love what Ethereum does with smart contracts, you're going to love what Hedera does. If you like Ethereum because of its security, you're going to love what Hedera does. It literally does everything better. 
Hash graph compared to blockchain, and I have to add the caveat, Stellar has stepped up his game because of his Starlight protocol, so I have to put Stellar to the side a little bit, so I'm not gonna include them in this, but generally, hash graph compared to blockchain is superior in every possible way. Every possible way. So this is why I said HBAR instead of, let's say, Stellar or XRP. If they love Ethereum, the, uh, if, they, if they enjoyed Ethereum, they'll love HBAR. So I think it's an easy transition because of that. The familiarity of working with smart contract te technology, you can move from Ethereum to HBAR very easily and you will save much more money, it's much more efficient and everything is better. So that's why I, I, wrote, a I wrote a direct message to Hedera and I brought this to their attention, okay? And uh, I believe that they would do very well in stepping in. Someone's going to step in. Someone's going to step in. So I took my steps to put put my thoughts in there, <laughs> try to sway, uh, to tr to try to sway Hedera into stepping into that that open category. I believe they can get that that CBDC off the ground easily. Um, I also posted their CBDC white paper. So Hedera is fully ready to roll out CBDCs. They don't have to announce all of their deals. They don't have to announce all of their all of their contracts, which a lot of the time is unwise. And making those types of announcements can get in the way of business, so a lot is kept on, kept uh, behind the scenes, okay? But they have their CBDC white paper out there. You have MTech leveraging uh, Hedera and building CBDC infrastructures. You have the Bank of Ghana, the central bank of Ghana, working with MTech to develop their CBDC. Man, maybe it's time for Hedera to step in there and take over a few more CBDCs. You, uh, if businesses want to compete, they're going to have to do the proper upgrades. It's not, it's not on us to wait for Ethereum. Like I, I don't have any love for any protocol, okay? I simply know what's going to make money and what's not going to make, make money, in my humble opinion. And Ethereum uh, has to upgrade if they want to compete. They didn't do the proper upgrade, so you, can't, you cannot compete with Hedera when it comes to transactions per second, speed, finality, um, security, that's that's on ethereum's developers okay so <laughs> there's a lot of good things going on so we'll see what happens we'll just keep an eye on it uh we'll continue to do the research and um and we'll see what announcements are made um everything is looking very good right now so you have ibm rolling out their central bank digital currency offerings with hsbc that's huge we have um the Bank of Thailand now is, is, is delayed for their CBDC to 2022. So we'll see who takes over and who fills that void. Uh, being that things haven't fared so well with consensus, okay? And I expect a few more banks to go that same pathway where they're going to have to either delay or, up, uh, or uh, swap out the blockchain that they're using for something other than consensus because they're superior technologies here now. Ethereum is just the popular one, okay? But it's not the best smart contract platform. Um, and no shade on Ethereum. If you have Ethereum, make lots of money from Ethereum, take profits, do all that good stuff. Uh, you know, I'm just, this is just factual information and that's just how, that's just my humble thoughts on the situation with the CBDCs over there in Thailand, okay? So now we have this. So now we have, um, massive, massive document from Maiden Labs. Well, okay, we went over their executive summary. Maiden Labs, I was trying to remember where I had learned of Maiden Labs from, and I now I remember it was from when the federal government of the United States was, was um, they wanted to test out multiple blockchains for their central bank digital currency or national digital currency, and they were working with MIT. Now, during that time, there were a lot of documents that came out, and in one of those documents, it said that MIT was uh, uh, doing a lot of analysis on these blockchains using and, and working with in conjunction with Maiden Labs. And that's when I first looked up Maiden Labs. Okay, so now, now we know who Maiden Labs is, okay? They're working with MIT. Now, in conjunction with MIT Digital, Digital Currency Initiative, the DCI, Dr. Neha Narula, who is the director and Maiden Labs, Shira Frank, who is the director at Maiden Labs, we have the full document here today uh, titled, Centering users and the design of digital currency. Now, this is what they're going to be using. This is one of the documents they're going to be using to inform the federal government. They're working with MIT. 
they were referenced in the documents when uh, the Fed wanted to test out the CBDC. So we can expect a lot of powerful eyes to be and, and powerful minds to be swayed by these particular documents. So let's take these with the utmost seriousness. Let's delve into this a little bit. I'm going to post a link to uh, uh, to this particular document on the community tab, uh, but you can go to Maiden Labs uh, website and give them some traffic over there and download it directly from the website if that's what you should so choose. Uh, here we go. Uh, so now let's go to page 78 of this particular document and we're going to read this section titled recommendations for u.s retail cbdc design this is of the utmost important to, importance to us let us see which uh which way they're leaning as far as their cbdc designs how might a cbdc improve the u.s payment system for users introducing this is the first bullet point Introducing a CBDC that does not aim for broad use by a diverse population from the start runs the risk of creating a financially exclusive two-tiered system. When a new system becomes adopted by the many, whether they do or don't need it, it avoids stigmatizing certain groups who can only use the new option and are currently excluded from the existing system. Bullet point number two. It is important that people can choose how to access a CBDC. One, directly. Two, via a preferred third party. I like that. Or three, through to a traditional retail bank. Based on our research, a CBDC provided only through traditional banks will not be appealing or accessible enough for broad adoption, especially among unbanked Americans. That's very true, and I agree with that. Wholeheartedly, I agree with that. Next bullet point. In order to facilitate financial inclusion and prevent financial exclusion, using a CBDC should not require someone to have a credit history or banking record. This already is a brilliant document and I agree with that wholeheartedly. They're literally giving them the key to victory here. Next bullet point, for greater applicability to those who are cash reliant or without traditional banking services, a clear process for transitioning between using physical cash to using a CBDC should be made available. To meet the needs of the 15% of Americans without a smartphone, alternative points, uh, alternative access points should be explored. For example, prepaid cards. Through our research, uh, oh, though our research didn't directly evaluate this accessibility concern, it is well documented and should be prioritized for any user related assessment of CBDC accessibility and equitable design. It is critical for technologists and policymakers to consider how a CBDC might fit into a user's broader financial ecology. Uh, a CBDC should be researched and developed for its potential capacity to fill important gaps in our current payment stack. Let me read that again. That was actually significant. A CBDC should be researched and developed for its potential capacity to fill important gaps in our current payment stack. So once again, integration. OK, so it's like a layer either on top of or below the legacy system. Uh, of course, the legacy system system would need to be upgraded substantially, substantially. And even with those upgrades, there's going to be gaps and holes. So, yes, a CBDC will be a major, major addition to uh, uh, that particular legacy system. But at the same time, it's also going to fill in gaps. This is going to be much bigger than I think we know. When CBDCs roll out, it's going to be unbelievable. But let's continue on here. Attributes. A major complaint we heard in interviews with users was the facelessness of third party payment services. There is either no option to speak to a real person when things go wrong or it is very difficult to do so. Good customer support will be a significant improvement on the status quo for users. Respondents share frustrations regarding various limitations and imbalances with third party payment services. For instance, Zelle users cannot connect multiple bank accounts and PayPal merchant users experience a persistent lack of agency based on PayPal's return policies. To improve on this experience for users would mean having relatively few restrictions. To support a feeling of personal control for users, there should always be clarity and predictability regarding any limits placed on spending amounts. That's interesting on how many transactions a person can make or on what a person can purchase. 
A US retail CBDC, which is convenient, easy to use, fast and free, will likely meet the payment needs of many of the US population. However, as many financial services provide some, if not all of these attributes, something more may be necessary to attract user interest. Additional actors related to CBDC. Our research focused on assumptions related to potential end users of a US retail CBDC. There are many, act many other actors besides end users that would operate within a CBDC ecosystem. This is very important. So let's, <laughs> let's just listen to this and let's see how many different actors there will be that will be flooding, flooding the blockchains, flooding the CBDCs with money. There are many other actors besides end users that would operate within a CBDC ecosystem. Therefore, additional exploration is necessary to generate a comprehensive understanding of the potential implications of a US CBDC. Additional actors we recommend for study include policymakers and regulators. Next bullet point, high volume cash businesses such as restaurants, bars, or retail, retail stores. We only interviewed a small number of a small number of small and medium sized enterprises in this study. So right off the bat, take into account, uh, let, let's say XRP's current volume, Stellar's current volume, HBAR's current volume, Algorand, Cello. And just imagine all of these large and small business institutions flooding the blockchains with with volume. That's number one. Then the people, the, the people who decide to utilize these particular systems, flooding it with volume. OK, then imagine the, the large business institutions flooding the blockchains with volume. Then the commercial banks flooding the blockchain with volume. Then the central banks flooding the blockchains with volume. How does that affect the price? Right. No. And all of this capital flowing through the blockchains, whichever ones they decide to use. Um, what does it do to that price? Risotto. That price will go through the roof. Um, now, let's continue on here. Large retail corporations who benefit from economies of scale when negotiating payment fees with payment providers. So there we have it. Large retail corporations, as I was just saying. So they're included in that. Neo banks, third party payment providers point of sale systems. There's so much that's going to be flowing through blockchain technology. Some of these crypto rails. It's unbelievable. Uh, when they say all of the money for XRP, I actually believe is all the money for the team, for the, the collective. Right. So that's XRP, XLM, Algorand, HBAR. There's enough money to go around. I keep saying this. I said this from the first day I had uh, I was on YouTube. There's enough money for everybody, for all of these protocols to have insane parabolic spikes. They're all one system interoperability. It's all one system. They're going to have to work together and they are. They're interoperable. Um, think about value moving across the blockchain, right? So they're, they're tokenizing real estate, right? So take that into account. They're tokenizing uh, artwork. They're tokenizing mu uh, music, right? <laughs> I mean, they're tokenizing everything. So you have all of this value uh, just flooding the blockchain. So high value and we can assume and I believe assume correctly a high average transaction value. These prices are not going to stay sub one dollar, sub two dollars, sub three dollars. They're not. In my humble opinion, if everything goes according to plan, that price is going to raise and it's going to be rapid when there's mass adoption. Uh, when the people take interest in these particular things, let's say Hedera actually uh, starts advertising more than they ever have before, as the they said they were going to do in 2022 and blockchain start to take off. Cryptocurrency rails start to take off because if you learn about one cryptocurrency rail, you typically will learn about another. So you learn about XRP, you typically will learn about XLM. Then if you learn about those two, you learn about HBAR, right? We're all we're all one community and that price is going to take off. Right. And, it, 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 and then it makes accumulation just a little bit harder. A little bit harder. So now at lower prices, uh, I think wise individuals are accumulating as much of these coins as they can while the prices are low. 
So let's continue on here. Governmental departments that are likely to interact with a CBDC, such as the IRS and Department of Justice. Okay, let me also throw this in there. I think I mentioned this either in the video before this one, maybe earlier in this video. There's going to be a lot of companies that roll out their payroll on the blockchain. The cello has already has companies. Look at their tweets. Okay, they just made a tweet. They have companies or a company already issuing payroll on cello. So we can assume if they're doing that on cello, people are probably going to uh, institutions, businesses are probably going to do something similar, similar to that to save money on Excel or Stellar. XRP, Ripple, Algorand, Why would they not? I love Cello, but all of these other protocol are superior at this particular time. So you're gonna have so many things happening where there's capital constantly flowing. The volume, the volume has to be high, which means the price is going to go up, right? So let's continue on here. Commercial banks and credit unions, we just covered that too. XRP now working with federal credit unions. Thank you, Linda, one of our very esteemed uh, channel members for bringing that information forward for us all. But now we have it confirmed. So the cryptocurrency banking coins will be uh, uh, being will be utilized by credit unions, federal credit unions. Right. So commercial banks and credit unions, investment banks, savings and loans associations, brokerage firms, insurance firms, the list just keeps going, and mortgage providers. <laughs> there is so much going on. Re keep in mind, these. this is a company that is advising the federal government through MIT. MIT has partnered with them. This is a co-document between Maiden Labs and MIT. Okay? <laughs> Other financial intermediaries such as the United States Postal Service, okay, <laughs> check cashing services and remittance providers. That money stack is getting bigger and bigger. Muy linda, mi gente. This is crazy. This is very, very good. I'm very, very excited and happy. Um, I couldn't feel more confident in, in being a supporter of the banking coins they're all going to win I, I hold all of the banking coins i like to say that because there's a lot of new people on the channel and they may believe like maybe i just have xlm or maybe i just have xrp so i want this one or that one to win no no any of them win i'm going to benefit greatly from them um these are the coins i've been focused on since the beginning all right so um i'm all about diversifying but within the banking coins <laughs> within the banking coins okay there are quick take profit plays out there. You go out to a, 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 a crypto with less utility and it's being pumped or something like that. If you get in low, you buy low, sell high. Yes, of course, that's, that's, that's very, very nice. But, and you can get some very disgusting profits off of some of those. It's very risky, of course, very risky. But if you do your due diligence, maybe you can make some money that way. But my focus has always been on the banking coins and utility-based coins. If there's a utility-based coin and I know it's going to be needed by the world, Let's take something like VeChain, for instance. It's not a banking coin, but it's going to be needed by the world. That's something that I would I keep an eye on. That's something that I hold a significant amount of, but it's not a banking coin, all right? But I'm not married to it either. I have my price target set. So when it's time, I know exactly when to take profit. Um, let's continue on here. I just wanna end it with this little blurb here because I think it tells a lot in one of these bullet points. Let's start here. It says, there is a fierce debate about how to upgrade the U.S. payment system. That is very true. There's a great there's a big fight going on. Um, there's so many resistors. So when you have a, a, a respected entity like MIT and Maiden Labs, who is working with MIT, OK. Their word carries a lot of weight with regulators. We need them to talk to the government. We need them to talk to the Fed. We need them to talk to anyone who has an ear to listen that has power because they can sway the, the the weight they can sway where everything is going their word is respected now let's continue on here it says the discussion revolves around five alternative and potentially complementary i agree options bullet point number one making incremental improvements to the traditional banking sector i think that that's almost unavoidable because of how archaic and antiquated the system is, it's going to be very difficult, not only just upgrading the infrastructure, not just the techno technological aspect, but also there's an education curve. You have to educate the people using it about what it even is. 
as you can see, a lot of the politicians and business owners have no idea how blockchain functions. They don't know anything other than Bitcoin. They don't know anything else. Okay. Uh, bullet point number two, investing further in private sector financial technology innovation. This is what the Bank of International Settlements, Augustus Karsten, Ms. great leader that he is, has been telling them to incentivize private sector innovation because the governments benefit from it. IMF has been saying the same thing, screaming from the rooftops, hey, incentivize innovation. We'll see if the United States gets on top of that at some point. Another bullet point, advancing regulatory clarity and the mainstream viability of private stable coins. Stable coins is just, I wanna say this about stable coins. A lot of people become very concerned that foundations are, are pushing stable coins instead of their marquee product like XLM, uh, Lumens, XRP, Algorand. Stable coins are just to get their foot in the door. They're easily accepted. Okay, they're not a threat to the US dollar. Okay, they can be conscripted and the government already waved their white flag saying, hey, a lot of government members saying, hey, why can't we just use stable coins to uh, support our systems? Okay, so stable coins are already near clarity. Not only that, stable coins are like, are, are to crypto what a free subscription is to a subscription movie site, right? So here's your free trial. Try it out. Do you like it? Get used to it. Get normalized to it. And then, hey, you want something better? You can use the paid service, which gives you much more, right? You can use our, 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 inter, our uh, how do you say it? You can use our best products if you want to pay a little bit more, right? So it's sort of like that. So yeah, you can use USDC, but I think, I, I'm not sure what the limitations are on USDC, but if you want the absolute best in security, absolute best in smart contracts, the absolute best in uh, finality, in federated Byzantine or acyclic, uh, uh, acyclic Byzantine <laughs> mechanisms and such for finality and security, all of these crazy things that XLM, HBAR, and XRP has going on, all of these advanced things. If you want that, you're going to have to use XLM. So when you're, you're, you're adjusted and you're ready for your free trial to end, then you can decide to use the best of the best. So what I'm saying is, it's just a gateway. Stable coins are a gateway into the world and the government's accepting and utilizing cryptocurrency rails. Utility coins is a gateway. Free trial. That's how I look at it. I don't know if I explained that eloquently or not. <laughs> I almost confused myself. <laughs> I think I did an okay job, dog. Humbly speaking. Next bullet point issuing a US retail central bank digital currency. While technologists design the future of money, central bankers from nearly every nation are exploring digital version of their currency. Not since the foundation of the internet have such critical and far reaching financial technology decisions being on the table. Then I say this the other day, I, I love that I have such great minds backing up what I said, which is you will never see an, in this lifetime, another explosive, generational wealth building a uh, 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 opportunity like what is before us right now with the banking coins uh you know all of them are solid picks right now i love h bar xlm love it uh xrp cello algorand they are absolutely wonderful in what they are doing they just need to continue to innovate continue to stay ahead of the, uh, the archaic legacy system, which is trying to compete, but can't really keep up. But don't give them a chance. Don't give them a chance. Uh, but there will never be another opportunity like this. The last one was the internet boom. Now we're here. It's our time. And we are going to shine. <laughs> we're going to shine brilliantly too. Mm -hmm. That's right, brilliantly. Private beach, private plane, right? And I, I know a lot of you, uh, you, you're doing well for yourself. So we're, we're living in pretty big houses and such, you know, you have your studio, like I have mine, but here's the thing. You want the mega mansion. You don't want the mansion. You want the mega mansion. You, you're tired of being a millionaire. I said this before. You have plenty of YouTubers that are millionaires, right? A lot of you out there, you guys are millionaires. You're tired of being a millionaire. You want to know what it's like to be a billionaire. It's a different way of living. Okay. So, so now is the time. Now is the opportunity. Keep in mind, like I said, because I know someone's out there going to be like, someone out there is going to be like, Alpha oh, Neem, are you shilling? No. How can I possibly shill? It doesn't matter if retail buys, whether you buy some or not, 
it means nothing. It means nothing. So I don't have to tell you to buy this or buy that. It doesn't mean anything. Retail was never meant to move the banking coins. We're hunting the white whale, right? We're in the ship. I have my spear. Put on your captain's, what is that called? Uh, your captain's telescope. I don't know what that's called. And let's peer out into the distance because the white whale is close. Moby is close. And we're going to have our prize. We're going to conquer. We did all of this research. We're going to continue to do research. We know where the corridors are. We know uh, what, what, what uh, NBFIs, non-banking financial institutions, are making a push to develop CBDCs. We know what the Bank of International Settlements wants, what the IMF wants. The hunt seems, I won't say almost, seems to be close to being over and we shall have our prize. So much money, your pockets are gonna be exploding. You're gonna have to search for something to do. You're not gonna be able to work anymore. You're not gonna be able to work anymore. You gotta figure out what, what beach you wanna go to today. What, what type of special drink you wanna have today that you couldn't dream of affording before. Best cigars, you like cigars? Best cigars, the best wine, caviar, leg of a lamb, the best chefs ever cooking for you. If all of this goes according to plan, you will be living like a Lord of the earth. But we'll keep an eye. There's no guarantees. We'll keep an eye on what's going on. But right now, muy linda, mi gente. Muy linda. Make sure if you <laughs> appreciate all this work, you appreciate these videos, please, if you use Adblock, whitelist me on Adblock because it keeps this channel alive, keeps this channel going, makes it worth doing all this research. And, and I, I really enjoy coming to everybody every day. Well, not every day, but when I can and giving you this information and giving you my analysis. So I appreciate you all out there. And now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.